You're listening. I just, I just don't care. Look, if you're 300 pounds, then you are a monster, and I don't want you to talk. Welcome back to This Is A Work. My name is David Hensley, and this is a very hostile work environment. I am here to introduce your host, David Two Dogs Hayes. Thank you very much, David Hensley, and welcome to another edition of This Is A Work. I am your host, David Two Dogs Hayes, and with me as always, my, my at least for right now, tag team partner who's just... Not very happy with me, Chris of the Fashion Plate Barnes. A pleasure to be here, Mr. Darso. <laughs> uh, so uh, this time, man, we went uh, and watched AEW's Full Gear 2022. It was full. I will give them that. <laughs> God, 15 matches, man. Yeah. Now, uh, full disclosure, guys, I did not get to watch the buy-in Uh but Chris Barnes did. I sure did. And he's going to tell us about it. Let's get into it right now with match number one, which was a 10-man tag with Danhausen, Orange Cassidy, Rocky Romeo, the best friends versus the, the fact- factory. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were pausing for a fact. I thought you oh, forgot. Yeah. No. <laughs> so how'd this go, man? Well, I will say overall, the buy-in was pretty packed because they not only had three matches, each of those matches was at least 10 minutes each. Okay. So, okay. I mean, it was, they, did a, they, didn't, they, they relied less on the video packages like they have previously. That's a, per usual. Well, see, the thing about it, I don't recall any feuds with, uh, I mean, the, a little, maybe a little pissant of a rivalry with, with it, but nothing to write home about. Maybe, but it's also good to me that at least they're making more use of the pre-show. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because if they're going to keep doing the quarterly stuff and packing it full like they are, then this is probably the best way to do it. Right, right. So uh, how'd it go? Uh, I thought it went pretty well. The uh, The 10-man tag was was interesting. It was it was pretty straightforward. Uh, mm-hmm. the, it was Well, the really, the entire setup was for one thing in particular, and that was when they when they announced they were going to have this match, they, they, it was, uh, the best friends, Rocky Romero, Romero and, um, and Orange Cassidy. And they were like, who's our, who's our partner going to be for this? Uh, here's a spooky tape. And they had a ring, a parody ring tape that played. Uh, and it was, and the fact that, oh, it's Dan Housen. Dan, yeah, Dan Housen's going to, so they come out, Dan Housen's not there. Dan Housen comes out late in the match after, you know, most of the, most of the match is done. And they, this is how they, this is how they premiered, back in full force Dan Housen. He's I'm guessing he is fully healed off of the broken femur from last year. Right. Um because now he is back. He is also because in addition to to his normal persona, he has gone back into the nightmare Dan Housen persona that he used to have. He came out the uh, 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 uh scarier face paint. Yeah. The jar of teeth, the spike. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was out there in full force. Oh, fun. They pick up the win over uh, the factory. And it's, it looks very interesting how it'll be going forward. All right. So my question to you is, how, mm-hmm. did, how did Nick Camarera look? I'll be honest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know who I'm talking about, right? I really don't, actually. The one that looks like uh, a Bruiser Brody on steroids. Oh, this is the guy. This is out, out of the everybody in the factory. This yeah. is the one guy that I'm like, he's got something, and they keep jobbing him. I mean, they all look they all look good for right now. I mean, it's, it was hard to tell because it was a it was a big match. It was a, big, well, a lot of guys, so there was a lot going on. Yeah, but I I think everyone performed well. Okay, okay, all right, right on. Now, if you had to put oh, a rating my God. on it. <laughs> This is the, the this is what started the argument earlier, guys. <laughs> Come on, get, well, oh, yeah. do you want me to do this, huh? I do want you to do okay, this. Okay, five. See, <laughs> Ted, you were right. <laughs> what was Ted right about? Nothing. No, no. What, I, what I, about I'm, match number I'm two? I'm very curious right now. <laughs> Don't worry about Ted. Mm. Ted's not here. Well, uh, second match: Ricky Starks face Brian Cage. Yeah. Uh, it was it was actually a very interesting match. It was uh, they were 
they went at they uh it was a pretty hard hitting match uh mm-hmm. and uh they really put Ricky Starks over uh, over as being someone ready to go to the next level because he I mean he I mean they didn't dominate it was really back and forth but Ricky Starks put him put Brian Cage away with oh what's the move uh it was a it was a power move he he got Brian Cage down with a with a pretty hard hitting move no kidding takes no. the pen and that sets up uh him versus Ethan Page uh I believe on Wednesday tomorrow mm. uh as part of the world title uh I think they're the finals for the world title shot See, I love both these guys. I especially Ricky Stark. I was watching Brian, him. Brian Cage looked good. He had a nice mohawk. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I saw the mohawk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Ricky Starks. I've been watching him in NWA Power. Mm-hmm. You know, w- way back when, and I, you, know, you can see something. He's got mm-hmm. something. Oh yeah. Even back then. Now, I, personally, I think he'd be a great world title contender. Oh yeah, I think so too. And it's uh, and Ethan Page came out at the end of the match to you know to have the stare down with Ricky Starks. Ah, there we go, right on. It looked good. It looked it came across really well. What what would you what would you put on it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a four point five. <laughs> that's right i'm putting the thumb on this scale and i'm just gonna yeah I, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna push me <laughs> i just wanted an opinion all right real opinion <laughs> i would say it was at least a four for the 10 man tag but that's because i liked everybody in it okay okay uh, for this one it maybe a three and a half i kind of tuned out a little bit but it was a good match i could tell right on right on i, I mean I, I don't see how it couldn't be uh, Brian Cage is a world beater. Yeah. And I think Ricky Starks has got all the potential in the world to be something. I mean, the the thing ultimately is the reason I'm having trouble assigning numbers, I always have trouble assigning numbers and stuff like this, is because I really only, it's like wrestling's kind of like pizza to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, this I is, like, that's what I'm saying. I you, like wrestling. And if it, and if it's, and if it's anything other than abysmal, I'm pretty high on it. <laughs> right on. And uh, hey, there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. No, it's, see that. That's why I just. That's why I was like, I don't want to put numbers on this. That's a, anyway. <laughs> well, plus you also don't like judging people too harshly either. Not unless and, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> No. I mean, I mean, I'll throw comments out there all day, but at the end of it, it's like I'm pretty entertained mostly. No, no, dogs. That's me that likes judging people pretty harshly. <laughs> I know. What would you give this match? I didn't watch this <laughs> match, so <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say something like negative seven. That's. <laughs> and then the final match was um, also interesting. It was Eddie Kingston versus Jun Mm-hmm. Uh, again, another dream match for Eddie Kingston. Uh, he got to face, uh, as they they pointed out. Uh, he, this is a guy he that inspired him to get into wrestling. He saw him at age 18 uh, wrestling in, in, in some event, and that ins, that's one of the things that really inspired him to go and do it. And so him, he finally got to face off again. Eddie Kingston's having a dream run in AEW in terms of getting to face people he's always wanted to face. He really is. And, you know, I... All right, I'm going to say something ugly. Mm. I like Eddie Kingston, but I don't... I'm really glad that he's getting all these matches that he want, wanted to have in his career because I don't see him going any further than that. I don't think I don't think he's really upset about going not going any further either. It seems like this is if anything, I mean can, if anything it seems like if it's like if this is like just a, a, an unofficial retirement tour, it's he's mm-hmm. he's doing it really well cuz he he and he and Akiyama went out there. They they hit hard. I mean, they was absolutely Japanese strong style. Maybe not everybody's favorite kind of match. It, it's it's the sort of thing that's like okay, I have to understand what they're doing to get into it. Right. Um, but it was it was a hard hitting match, and then finally at the end, uh, Eddie pinned him with the back fist. That old school strong yeah. style is a it's a niche style yeah. that not everybody's going to get into it's Mm -hmm. what you would watch i would say 20 25 years ago yeah in in wrestling where they would hit each other and you would hear the crowd Ooh, yeah it's a hundred percent that it was it was uh eddie kingston's chops versus akiyama's four forearms to the neck right on it was pretty much that battle the whole way through and akiyama's chest was (laughs) like a just a beat red did eddie go over he did, like I said, he he hit him with, he got him with finally with the back fist and took it. 
uh, there was a there was a, uh, a a nice show of respect between them at the end where they bowed to each other. Right on. And a, Good. And a, and a you know strong handshake and yeah, it was a great match. All right, fantastic. Hey, see, you know what you do? What would you put on it? Honestly, for me, a three. If I'm being firm, because again, like I said, I, I was like, again, strong style is like I I get what's going on, but it's not really it. It's not. It doesn't really thrill me all that much. <laughs> I mean, but it's like I I admire the, what what they're doing and how tough it actually is and what. Oh, a hundred percent. I'm actually I'm I'm gonna add your ratings in here because okay. it's it it sounds solid to that, me. That that one's real. That one, they, they I, the revised ones were all real too. I just. Yeah. No. Totally. Uh, now let's get into the main meat of the pay per view because yeah, they kicked off strong. <laughs> now we only got twelve. So all right, here we go. Now we started things off uh, with a cage match, which I'm I'm never really a fan of, uh, but you know what? It, I thought it was a good, solid match. We have Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus. That's right. Uh, Luchasaurus uh, gets color on Jungle Boy really, really early, mm-hmm. just right off the bat, and I listened to some other people. Uh, talking about it and people were kind of saying that uh jack perry was not real big on getting color and he that's why it was he had to do it a couple of times Mm. uh during the match to try to get it because he was afraid of it or maybe he wasn't afraid of it or just didn't want to do it which that's fair i get you're cutting yourself i I, I get it that's fair on it yeah and yeah some people just aren't you know some people just don't want to do that. I I completely understand. And, it's psychotic. And and even in a in a cage match, you don't necessarily have to do that. Well. I, uh, okay, I know, I know, I know. It's a controversial opinion. You don't necessarily. It is with me. Yeah. But you know what? WWE has already proclaimed we're not doing color On anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're just not doing it. We can have a great match without it. I and yeah, fair. I'll I I don't like it, but I'll accept it. Um. So yeah, uh, still I, he was a team player and did it. So. He did, yeah. he did, and you know what? I, I thought uh, I thought both people did mm. really well. They really did. Yeah. Um, one of the what well, one of the top perform things for me was uh, Jungle Boy uh, jumping off off the top of the damn cage. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the finish through that yeah through put luchasaurus through a table mm-hmm. yeah uh now something that uh we should talk about is uh, christian cage being on the outside yes how'd you like the pit pocket move uh from the referee i loved it <laughs> i absolutely loved it that was some uh, that was some adorably sneaky shit it was i, I didn't like it the first time i saw it the yeah. second time i was like okay this is it was good because I also noticed that the other ref had the exact same yeah thing going on just to match so that it would look a little better. Uh, you know what? It, it it works for me now. I, lo- I, I, I changed love, my mind. I love how that sneaky moment was immediately offset by him getting caught blatantly trying to open the cage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was a fun match. Um, and I, I love the the going back into the to the through the table thing because that rolled into the finish where uh, Jack Perry s- slapped on his submission and like in the middle right before Luchasaurus gives up he also starts spitting up blood it's just yeah it's just a very a very uh, final fi- fi- there was a finality to it yeah no very, I, I loved it yeah. uh, it was a great way to start the night off uh, I I gave it a four mm-hmm. uh, so moving on to um, our next match, we have the Death Triangle versus the Elite. Um, this they're, is for they're back, dogs. They boy they're are back. they. This is for the World here. Trio titles. Yes. Um, look, I'm, I, let's just call this what it is. I'm not a fan of the six man title mm-hmm. roster. I. I they, we've tried this before. It hasn't worked out. It's it's nobody's fault. It's just 
I don't, I don't know if it's too many chefs in the kitchen or what, but it just, it never pans out the way anybody wants it to. Well, we'll see. We'll, we will see. Um, now I, I am a fan of death triangle, not so much a fan of the elite. Uh, I'm going to go on a tangent here for a second All because, right. uh, one of the main things that we started was the fuck CM Punk chant. Uh, I commented how ironic it was that not six months ago, all the entire stadium was filled with the chant CM Punk, Mm -hmm. CM Punk. Yeah. And I believe in the wor- words of a WWE wrestler, uh, Daniel Bryan, mm. uh, the fans are fickle. Yeah, they really, really are. Uh, and the fans love chanting things, and they were they were happy to see the elite again. So it, it wasn't just enough to express their appreciation that they were back. Um, you know, they had to show that they were on their side. Right now, as I have said, I've I don't know. I, I did tell you about this. I got into an argument with a few people on the Tic Tac. On the uh, internet, yeah. really? <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and uh, I did tell them that I would address everyone's issues with me uh, tonight. Uh-huh. Take it easy with that microphone, pal. We need a- <laughs> yeah, Chris is addressing his own issues with my microphones. <laughs> we need... We need that graphic that that people love to. I, I love to see. I, I see people loving to repost, which is Eddie Kingston addresses his enemies. Yeah, we just need that for you. Now listen. Uh, first of all, I am mad at nobody. I understand that people have got upset with me uh, today and yesterday, uh, and that's okay because honestly, I would rather argue about professional wrestling than I would anything else in the world. I thought you were going to say, I'd be mad at me too. <laughs> no, I, I mean, no. I wasn't ugly. No, I, no, I, I just, I, I just expressed an opinion and also much like most things yeah. that are, that people like to argue about. I, I'm a man without a country here Yeah, because I think CM Punk acted extremely unprofessional. Mm-hmm. I think the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega also acted extremely unprofessional. Sure. Had I been Tony Khan, I'd have fired the whole damn crew. I don't know about fire, but there's, I feel like there could have been more serious repercussions. As soon as yeah. I had heard that like so-and-so is headed to so-and-so's locker room, I just any amount of sent any amount of people to like get in between them now. Well, you know that was something else that I was going to address. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it had I again, I, I turn all of this back on me. What would I have done if I had heard CM Punk? Because that's what he would do. He would he would publicly blast me, oh. you know, <laughs> because I'm so popular. Mm-hmm. Had I thought that he had, uh, if I heard him do that to me, I was like, oh, okay. No, we're going to take care of this right now. I would I would go straight to him and I was like, "Hey, we got a problem, kid." And, which is uh, which is in in your defense exactly what he said he wanted people to do. Right, exactly, exactly. Also, go ahead. Isn't that how the fight started though? Yes. <clears throat> Essentially, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, was it the Young Bucks who went back to the locker room? But not to- even by themselves. They went mm-hmm. with like uh, talent relations and lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, no, I would have just gone me. It, it would have just been me. Look, let's do. <laughs> do we need to? Do we need to step outside or something? <laughs> now, let's go back to the. I, I respect the Young Bucks for having a. If they got a problem. They address it Mm -hmm. right then. On the other side of this, if I'm CM Punk, I and I had a problem with the Young Bucks. I don't know that I would have addressed anything publicly like that. Oh no! But I would have gone to them early on. Say, "Hey guys, listen. What what are you What are you doing?" But. Let's say I'm in the dressing room minding my damn, and here they come. Hey, what the hell? Blah, blah, blah. And 
man, maybe they said something that aggravated me. Or maybe they kicked my dog or whatever. <laughs> that just happened to be there for some unknown reason. Yeah, I'm, yeah I might have hit them. I might have. Yeah. I'd like to say that I wouldn't. I'd like to say like, oh, okay, if it's going to be like that, you two and me need to, let's, let's take a walk outside and uh, let's handle this like men. So, look, I respect that too. Yeah. I, I respect that part of CM Punk. Not to mention, most of the things that CM Punk said, I tend to agree with. Uh, not counting the, uh, the Colt Cabana stuff. I, that, <laughs> I, 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 don't know any, I don't know enough about that to have an opinion, so I'm not going to focus in on that. I know enough to know that CM Punk is a man who will never let a grudge go. <laughs> Clearly. Now, uh, as far as CM Punk, going to WWE, because I said I would address this too. Guys, I, you know what? If it happens, it happens. I don't think it's gonna. I can, I'll, I'll be more firm than that. I don't No. Not only does, would he not want that, I'm pretty sure, uh, if nothing else, most of oh. everyone in WWE doesn't want that either. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I would like to thank you personally, Two Dogs, for being the reason that wrestling things show up in my Instagram feed. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, that never used to happen before I started promoting the show. Um, but yeah, more wrestling news shows up in my Instagram feed than I would like. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I saw was an interview where... Um, and it wasn't an interview. It was like insider word uh, from the wrestlers backstage in WWE. Uh, it was anonymous, but essentially uh, it sounds like creative wants to bring CM Punk back. Right. The wrestlers and Triple H are absolutely against it. Like, yeah. None of the other talent wants him with somebody directly saying, like, if he said all of that while he was over there, what, what's he going to say when he gets here? And what has he already said when he was there the first time? He's, already, he's pissed off a number of people. He's pissed off Booker T at one point in time. He's let's, 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 I mean, let's put it in perspective here. That's CM Punk's exit from a company that lauded him and loved him from day one. Right. You know, when he really... Arguably did not deserve it. Arguably. Don't don't come after me. Arguably. Arguably in the sense of like it seemed like a bit much for, for him, but it's like Yeah. The people wanted it, management was high on him, he was basking in it, mm -hmm. and this is still how it turned out. How do you think it goes when WWE, when it gets to if he somehow gets back in WWE and things go sour? Right. Now could it be a one shot? I think that's that's oh, that's in the realm of possibility. They can negotiate a, uh, enough money for at least one night of n no problems. A hundred percent. Like, I mean, God, we've got an extended contract for Logan Paul. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, one more thing, and then we're going to move on. Okay. Also, guys, yes, I am talking shit about CM Punk. Uh, in the same breath, I will also say he is an exceptional wrestler. He is very talented, and to be as old as he is to still going, I think that's a credit. He has a better understanding of ring psychology and in-ring story than I think most other people, barring one person, in AEW. I will also say, uh, as far as the Young Bucks go, very uh also very talented very talented i'm not gonna say either they i'm trying to think how I would, how i'd like to word this either they don't know anything about ring psychology or they do know and just refuse to do it i would be like they tend to over apply it you, you think in, so? In the sense of like they, they know what to do, but then they just want to double down too much on it on certain things. That's that's pretty apt. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't think about that. No, that's good. Okay. Okay. That's the end of my tangent. Mm -hmm. No hard feelings to anybody out there on the TikTok. Oh, they'll find them. <laughs> uh, 
but if you if you want to come at me, we'll I mean we'll 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 talk some more. I, I like I said I I love arguing about this, and I ain't mad at nobody. It so. really does. You fuel him. You you have to understand this. <laughs> All right. So before you dive back into this match, I sure. have to ask you something, and I'm probably going to regret this. Okay. Is there some kind of history or explanation or lore about why they're called Death Triangle? I don't have a damn clue, man. I, I think it Death was- Triangle is the dumbest fucking name I have ever fucking heard for any kind of wrestling group or an improv group. <laughs> death Triangle. Well, there's three of them. It does it's not just, roll. There's, there's three points of death staring at you. Yeah. Oh, my God. There are names. There's a phoenix. It- Set you on fire. And then there are names that roll off the tongue. And then there are names that just defy logic and good reason and basic humanity. <laughs> and Death Triangle <laughs> wow. is one of those names. If I were legally allowed to murder five names and get away with it in my lifetime, I'd murder Death Triangle five <laughs> times. <laughs> Can I, just say, as entertain- <laughs> can I just say, as entertaining as that was, I was really hoping when you said, can I ask something, and leaned in, I, th- I was really hoping you'd ask, who is CM Punk? <laughs> <laughs> Which one was he again? <laughs> He's one oh of the masked my- guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's talk about this match, man. <laughs> um Again, honestly, there, there's really not a whole hell of a lot to say. It yeah. was a typical Young Bucks uh, Death Triangle match. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, sorry, well, go no, no, you go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll jump in in a minute. I, I mean, it, it was the same thing, and we've uh, we we've seen uh, the the Lucha Brothers and uh, and the Young Bucks do this before. Mm-hmm. It's it's I'm always exciting. It it's always exciting. It is. Well, works. by God, you're gonna be because <laughs> as I, f- I only found out about this after this match ended. <laughs> Me too. We all we all found I don't out. Know, about I don't it. know when they announced this or if it was just like meant to be just announced after the match. But um, best of seven. It's gonna be a best of seven. My God. Now are me. the titles on the line every time? <sighs> well, maybe. I mean, maybe because. I mean, yeah, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> but I will say the the best thing about this match, or the best couple of things to take away was uh, one Death Triangle won, and I and I and I am happy about that. And it makes me think the way the way that this went down, uh, that this was always the plan. Like the the Young Bucks, the Elite were supposed to probably have the titles up until here, and then then this would have kicked off the best of seven. Yeah. After the Death Triangle. To, I feel like that was the plan before things went awry. You know, I, I've never, I, I've only seen one best of seven match that I was excited about. Now I was a child when mm-hmm. this happened, and this was Magnum TA versus Nikita in oh, a best okay, of seven. Yeah. We didn't see it like I mean, it was it was all spaced out. It was like from like a pay per view to pay per view. They didn't even have pay per views. It was, you know big arena matches mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't television like i think you saw maybe one or two on television but for the most part it was it was always big arena matches that you could yeah. and this thing lasted for a minute mm-hmm. uh, but it was exciting and i was also a child so i didn't know any better then <laughs> i mean the ser- i mean and again the series from when i got into it and started watching we can't really talk about anymore because it was booker t versus chris benoit for the um Oh. I think it was the TV title. It was. It was, yeah. 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 Uh, but no, but this... The other, but the other important thing about this was the interesting development within Death Triangle because the way they won was originally mm-hmm. Pac was going to hit... Uh, Pac, excuse me. Pac was going to hit one of the young bucks with a hammer, and I'm all for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, but uh, he aren't got, we all? He got sidetracked, so it was like... he So he kept trying to get the hammer to Phoenix, who didn't want to do it he did not want to cheat and he, he kept did, shaking his head no, no i he don't ended, want to he ended like pack gave him the hammer he ended up with it and finally at the end when he was about to get taken down he finally used the hammer and took out uh i think it was omega and they, they secured the win and it was my favorite thing like phoenix is on the, the the mat and pack was right there like a happy big brother like, you did it buddy he was, he was so proud mm-hmm. of him now 
this is let, let me ask you a question and this is going to be a reoccurring theme throughout this pay-per-view mm-hmm. chris barnes who was the face and who was the heel in this the crowd was happy the elite were back and i think mm-hmm. i think technically i mean at least tonight they were both face teams essentially mm-hmm. um the crowd loves death triangle but I, if I, I don't remember if you noticed on the second one, didn't Pack come out of the heel entrance? He did come out of the heel. But the, entrance. the Lucha Brothers came out of the face one. They did. So it, I think that's the dynamic they're building on at this point because previously they had all been face, even though Pack is, you know, iffy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think it's, it's going to be an interesting development in terms of. But I, I. I think they're still being treated as you know the faces okay okay however that that looks like with the way things have been the match went tonight that could shake up okay so we have an international object uh uh thrown into the mix to it was cause... truly international because it was an englishman and two mexicans yeah well i was talking about the object itself no but... no i mean they were both, they were handling <laughs> it so it was literally an international object oh that oh there you go <laughs> uh now uh yeah so we have uh, Death Triangle getting the win. Mm-hmm. The Elite actually does the job, even after they came out to carry on my wayward son. Apparently that was something on their bucket list they wanted crossed off for a long time now. Yeah. Well, they got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is going to come back up later. We'll talk about it then. Moving on to our next match. I gave, first of all, I gave uh, the uh, Death Triangle versus the Elite also and I think you're going to be surprised, but I did give it a four. Okay. A I mean, it's match. hard to argue against the action. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, there was there any – yeah, there was story in there. Yeah. But was there any psychology in the match? Not a ton. Um, I mean, with the Lucha Brothers and, and the, the – I keep wanting to say just the Jacksons and not the Young Bucks. <laughs> uh, with the Jacksons of all, it's like, you know what, most of that is going to be spot fest shenanigans. Yeah. And, yeah. and packed in there too because that man can move. <laughs> I also would really like to change the style of pack. I, I understand that he is a high flyer and that's what he's known for mm-hmm. even back when he was Neville. Um yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, but, God, look at the man. He he honestly, he looks like a roided-up version of Buddy Murphy. I mean, he's just, he's a monster, and he looks, he, he looks like a grappler, and I would love to make him I'm, like a Chris Benoit type. How much? Like one that would kill his family. <laughs> I was hoping you'd let that part go unsaid for reasons. You shouldn't have asked me. I should not have. (laughs) This is your fault. (laughs) Thank you for listening to This Is A Work. Specifically the part when I said, yeah, I'll do a podcast with you. This is going to be the last episode and also probably Long Walk Podcast is getting canceled by the internet tomorrow. (laughs) I hope you have enjoyed this is a work. <laughs> I mean, on the plus side, if he's saying all that, that means he's not going to cut it. That's true. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Let's see what else I can get away with. <laughs> you know, fat people. Um, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> comedy is legal on Long Walk Podcasts again. Oh, so. uh, and here are the is set, it though? And here's the set of rules about it. <laughs> <laughs> but also, if you imitate me, I'm banning all of you. Oh, <laughs> well, that well, that takes the fun out of it. Oh, uh, well. well, that that cuts a good clean ten minutes off this podcast. <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on to something we can make make fun of: Jade Cargill <laughs> versus Nyla Rose. Boy, hang did on. you feel that? <laughs> when I was... Hang on, I I did want to go back for one second. I think you're kind of right about Pac. But I, I think it's, I think it will over time happen. Just as he'll probably have to transition a little bit once mm-hmm. he gets old, as he gets older. Um, I think he'll, he could probably transition to a really good speedy grappler type. Yeah, I mean, I, but I mean, honestly, who can occasionally him, still does come he up? not look like he would grab your arm and take you down and just stretch you for an hour? Yeah, I, mean, I believe he, he'll do that now, and then he'll, ju- then he'll also jump up to a turnbuckle and drop himself on you yeah i mean i i I think that's where he's best suited i would love god man don't make me a booker up there i'll man i'll I'll turn this company around (laughs) 
by God. Uh, but anyway, on to the thing you want to make fun of. Yeah. No, I don't want to make fun of it. It's But, <laughs> but this, it's going to happen. But let's be fair. This was not a good match. Uh, this is for the TBS title. Um, you know, there are very few wrestlers that have gotten the push that Jade Cargill has gotten with such limited ability. And my God, um, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. I've never really seen someone with such a lack of wrestling knowledge that has gone so far. I mean, she look, she looks great. She looks like a wrestler. Mm-hmm. I mean, she looks like a monster in the ring, but uh, man, until that bell rings, uh, I don't know. That feels a little like hyperbole to me. There, there, there. She cannot possibly be the apex of what you're describing. She, she's gotten better. <laughs> she has gotten. Better. She has. I'll give you that much. She has gotten better, but I mean, how much are we talking about? And Nyla Rose. Uh, Look, I'm just going to say it, man. She sells. She's a 300-pound woman, and she's selling like she's like, like she's a buck 80. Big show. She's selling like big show. I mean, it's it's too much. It's just way and I I know that we're going to we're pushing Jade as the powerhouse, but come on, you got to give me a break here. I mean, as a what, what, what say you, Chris Barnes? I don't know. I, I honestly, I like Nyla Rose, and um, I feel like she should. She is overdue for another uh, chance to be on top. No, no one should come close to beating Nyla Rose in the women's division. Period. I don't know about that, but I think she should be allowed to show off more. I got, yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. Uh, as, especially because I, I, I think she should be given a chance to show off more of the personality she has on Twitter. Right. And she, she, well, she, she came out in a uh, she came out in, in the Eddie Guerrero mobile. No, no. Well, yes, yeah, she did with with Vicky and and yeah and Marina Shafir. Mm-hmm. And that was that was good. And uh, yeah, I think she, yeah, I is like again nothing personal against Jade Cargill, but she doesn't do anything for me really. She doesn't do anything for me and, either. And I that's the I don't think she does anything for anybody. I don't see how she's and, getting this push. Once again, we're dovetailing into the problem of, okay, well, now she's beaten Nyla Rose. Now what? Now how does this go? <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, you know, we, we love to hate on Roman Reigns, but my God, we should really be talking more about Carhill. Than, There's actually, I mean, I, as much as I hate Roman on At least Roman makes sense. <laughs> as much as I, oh, I enjoy hating on Roman Reigns, and we could fill a podcast with that. Um, and have. And have. <laughs> <laughs> but at least there's at least there's two years of work behind that no, of a guy who even if he has even if he has a limited repertoire has more way more experience yeah well i mean you know hey we got we've got at least nine months of jade Carhill <laughs> going strong so mm. that's we're we're getting there mm. uh yeah this match was choppy uh it was as I put it during a podcast, and then one of the commentators, I think it was Jr. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, there was a mo- followed there, up on me. There was a moment. Bowling where, shoe ugly. You had said it earlier, and then you said it again about a move, and I was like, I was about honestly, I was about to go. That seems like a. And then Jr. said that was bowling shoe ugly. <laughs> and I mean seconds. It guys. was. <laughs> it was like you quoted your favorite movie like five seconds before the line happened. Right. Right. <laughs> But it was, guys. This was it. Nyla oversold. Jade just uh, she, I th- she threw out some some and decent think, power moves. I think on Nyla Rose's part, unfortunately, that's just probably what's come down about you know pushing Jade is like you have to sell for. Her. Yeah, and and you know, look, it, it has its place. I understand that, but Nyla Rose of all people. Yeah, that's I, I I can't get past it. Uh, we had a decent finish, but that was about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cargill retains. She does. 
Uh, and I gave this match, uh, I originally gave it a two, but after going back and watching it again, it was uglier than I oh, no. remembered. So I gave it a one and a half. Um, now, uh, let's get into this. I changed this rating too. Interesting. Uh, we have Chris Jericho versus Brian Danielson versus Claudio Castagnoli. Am I saying that right? I think you do actually pronounce the G, but you were close. Castagnoli. I think yeah. you're right. I mean, yeah. honestly, you're you're like 90% there, so it's no problem. We'll call him Cesaro. Uh, <laughs> no. Versus Sammy Guevara. Um Okay, and, I got and, another issue. Hang on, before we get into that, I just I have to say one of my favorite moments of this match was the crowd really enjoying the Jericho Appreciation Society intro, and then as soon as it hits to the Sammy themes proper, boo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is that. Now, look, okay. I have made this point before with you guys. I don't think I've actually made this point on air, but I'm going to now. Um, the ratings for AEW, they're, they're not great, but then, I mean, just wrestling in general, the ratings aren't great. Uh, they're coming up. If you want to get AEW to those good attitude ratings that we had back in the day, no, I'm, nothing's really going to touch that ever again. I don't, I don't think so either, but we'd like to get close and if we can get in order to get close, you can't be putting over two different federations. Um, you know, you like you put over Ring of Honor on dark, and you know, and see if it gets a reaction. If it gets a reaction, bring it to the main roster, and then we'll work with something. But let's not let's not oversaturate AEW with uh, Ring of Honor. That's that's just my humble opinion. I disagree slightly. I'll explain why. Please. I, I think, well, one, um, in regards to the ratings, yes, of course, they should mm-hmm. always push and try to keep getting those growing. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. But the ratings they are pulling, it should be pointed out, in terms of cable viewership, mm-hmm. are still some of the highest there is uh, outside of, like, sports. That's, and, you're and, right. And, you're and, right. And, of course, it's not measuring up quite to WWE, but that's because WWE's had, like, a couple decade head start. Right. They've got, they've got an audience built in. Yeah. <laughs> As proven by some of, the, some of the depths they've plumbed, it's like they'll still pull numbers <laughs> because people are like, well, I'm, uh, maybe it's better this week? Yeah. <laughs> and it has improved, so their, their numbers have gone up as well. Uh, I, I do not disagree with you. And, the, the, and you know what? I think once ROH is properly rolling on its own again mm-hmm. we will we will they will phase it out of AEW programming but i see what the, but the important thing they're doing here is they they they're keeping it pre- present they're keeping it present i'm sorry good oh i'm sorry i just wanted to say that we spent three out of the four years we've been doing this podcast going maybe it'll be better next week <laughs> wrestling <laughs> that's fans true. there's that something true. you need to know about wrestling fans we don't learn lessons no we don't we we constantly repeat history i mean yeah at nauseum yeah. I mean. but but it's like it, i i get what they're trying to do at the very least it's like they're trying to keep the brand the roh brand you know a, a conscious thing in people's minds so that it's still there they're keeping it li- a lot basically they're keeping it alive until it can until they can have it set up so that it's out on its own again and I know you understand that too. I do understand that. And I'm not. I'm not accusing, but I also see your side of it. Yes, you're right. Because in order, in order to concentrate on growing AEW, you're right. This should probably be relegated. But it is pretty well relegated down for the most part. I think it's basically it's you're making the AEW titles. You're, you're basically you're you're saturating the roster with titles much like WWE has done in the past to where the titles don't really mean that much anymore. And that's, this is a problem for me. It's always been a problem for me. And it's, I, I, if I, if I see a title belt on somebody, I want to respect that title. Well, I see your point, but I I also think it's, I also really appreciate the storyline they're going with here. And it's funny you would say exactly that because that is the point of Chris Jericho having this title. He wants to ruin it. (laughs) 
<laughs> as he as he's a, he wants he wants to to be as a sports entertainer ruin the Ring of Honor name. <laughs> v- apt. Well done. What well, good segue into this. You're right. We should all appreciate me a little more. <laughs> Have the Chris Barnes Appreciation Society. Oh God, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have to oh, keep... you want me to fight you with your microphone <clears throat> now, huh? We have to keep you humble. <laughs> I like that so hard. Uh, Did you actually turn this back on? It doesn't sound like it. Yeah, yeah he turned it on. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry about it, Chris. <laughs> oh, good. So, um, Is it? Here... Okay, I couldn't tell. So here's the thing about this match. There was... there. You've got a, a cavalcade of stars in this, and... The, these are some of the best performers in the world. And sadly, there's nothing particularly special about this four-way dance. It was good. It was good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. But there's not a whole hell of a lot to talk about other than the ROH title. Uh, that... Ended up staying on Jericho. That could also be because we're only about halfway through this show. I know. <laughs> like, we've seen a lot. And even with the Jade Cargill, Nyla Rose match being short, this was 21 minutes long. Yeah, it was. It was. I will say the, the interesting thing they did in here was they had the, uh, they had the moment where Sammy Guevara tried to win for himself. Yeah. Uh, and then got extremely pissed at Jericho because Jericho stopped him and they start slugging it out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was, and then we had the same thing on the other side with the Blackpool combat combat club, excuse me, uh, with, uh, Claudio and, uh, Danielson. Yeah. But that was more friendly rivalry kind of thing as is, as befits the club itself. Truth. Truth. That was like, well, yeah, we're both trying to win because we want to win. Right. Right. Uh, Right. We're here to fight, and as and it, yeah, it blended together in, with uh, with Jericho uh, sneaking in, sneaking in for the win. Yeah, uh, again, nothing particularly special about that match, but a solid match nonetheless. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. The crowd was into it, so uh, for this reason, I'm giving it another four. I can dig it. Um, now we're going to move on. Now to... for the reason we all watched this. <laughs> Boy, is it? Well, if I believe the internet. Soraya versus Britt Baker. Um, okay. This is what I like to call a compliment criticism sandwich. Oh, the compliment sandwich, yes. <laughs> I am happy that Soraya did not die during this match. Starting mm-hmm. off strong. Go there ahead. We, thank you. All thank right. you. Um... She doesn't know how to wrestle. Do you mean any more or does she never? Or any less. Okay. (laughs) No. Okay. Look, that's an exaggeration. Um, There's a lot of ring rust on her. Um, And I wonder why that is, dogs. Why don't you tell me, Hensley? (laughs) Uh, Because she hasn't wrestled in three, four years. I don't know. You'd have to ask Xavier Woods. Um. (laughs) Shockingly, I wasn't the one that was going to go there. I was just pointing out she's rusty because it has been three to four. Actually, five. Five years since the woman wrestled. Yeah, yeah. I really thought you were going there. And I, got I don't need to. Xavier Woods already has. Boom. There he is. <laughs> I'm not needed for like the next five minutes, I don't think. <laughs> No, nah, I'm not going to do it. Um, no, not like the 15 minutes you guys rolled on when we watched the pay Oh, meeting. yeah, we kind of wore ourselves out on that one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too easy? Uh, God, you keep you keep <laughs> lobbing them up there, and I'm oh, I'm not taking the bait. He's, he's anyway, being a, he's being a good scene partner. You're Sor- not yes anding. Uh, Soraya and Bit ba- Bit Baker, Brett Baker, go for it. Okay, <laughs> um, okay, we'll 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 move on. Um, well, I can see like they put her against Britt Baker for this to make sure to offset that. Yeah, um, and honestly, very 
proud of Britt Baker. Mm -hmm. She carried Soraya through the whole damn match. I I, I think that was plainly obvious to me. Um, I can't say one way or the other. I'll I'll defer to you on that one. It I I like. (laughs) She 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 took some some very cautious bumps. Mm-hmm. She got a little crazy there uh, during the middle, but not everything that she did was very safe. Um, it was it, it was a basic match with a modern style. That's that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, there was nothing special about it. Mm-hmm. And be honest, I think Britt looked great during this match. Uh, because I, I mean, I it seemed obvious to me she was carrying Soraya through the whole damn thing. Soraya looked fine. Um, that's it, man. That that's that's all I can really say about it. I mean that. I mean that's good in terms of like you know someone not getting in the ring for five years yeah. and and you know able to. Is lo- is like the the real fear when someone steps back in the ring after that long is just like don't suck. <laughs> Yeah, I and, mean, while, and while she didn't blow the roof off, she didn't. She, there was no blatant embarrassment. Right, the crowd was not into this match. Uh, like they got, there were moments. Yeah, but nothing, nothing solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's not a lot I can say here. I, I because of that, I I gave it a middle of the road rating, and I gave it a two point five. Sure, that's fair. I'll I'll be honest. I I while I enjoyed the whole show, I kind of tuned out from here to Sting and Darby. <laughs> a little bit, not not hard, but I the phone was out a little more during these matches. Sure, no no problem, no problem. I got you. Uh, let's move on to our next one. Uh, yet another three way. I, I we gotta we gotta chill out with the three ways too. The three ways and the four ways and the nothing. Okay. I will. Right. I will say. I will. <laughs> I'm ignoring that. I Matt will Stryker. say. No. Okay. I will say this one was punchier than the other matches. Okay. Uh, uh, pun intended. Because <laughs> uh, it, it was just the, the Samoa Joe versus Wardlow versus Powerhouse Hobbs was just a good example for just big men to hit each other. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh. I'm just now realizing I don't actually remember this match happening. Yeah. No. This, you, you were as pro- soon you were as pro- you said Samoa Joe, I was like Samoa Joe wrestled on. He, he did. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I tuned this one out completely too. Oh, I know. I know you were you were on your phone for this one specifically. <laughs> this one was uh, th- this was the big man match. Uh, yes, it was. This the this big was meaty men. Yeah, the big men slapping meats. Uh, yeah, uh, Samoa Joe versus Wardlow versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, you know, TNT I w- Championship on the line. Oh yeah, and you know, I was not. Um, I've always been kind of lukewarm to to Hobbs. Mm-hmm. Man, he's he's been in the gym. Mm-hmm. He's work. He looks phenomenal, and he's moving around that ring yeah, a yeah. lot better. Not that he was. Not that he was bad to begin with, but it's it's becoming more fluid. Yeah, and I think I, you're right. I think he's been hanging out with some of the uh, the legends and the coaches and talking to them and getting some ideas. Um, I I know for a fact that he uh, has been talking to CM Punk. Uh, I just I, I'm not trying to beat that dead horse. I just they, he actually said it. He was like CM Punk helped me and I'm sorry to as I, I wish this nastiness wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um so there you go. There's something good. There's a silver lining there. Um I kinda hate that he did the job on this one because he is doing so much better. Uh but now uh really hard hitting match uh and the ending of this is Samoa Joe Hooks up Hobbs and chokes him out for the win. Uh, a couple of one of the uh, bigger hard hitting things was uh, Wardlow grabs Powerhouse Hobbs and gives him the Power Bomb Symphony. Mm-hmm. Which again, I wish he would have done this to Joe instead of Hobbs. I, I just 
I, I hate that he was taking all of the finishers. I, when you're trying to make stars, and he's coming along so far, yeah. but it almost makes me wonder: is it because he was a CM Punk guy? No, I don't think so, and I, I honestly don't think it'll hurt him in the long run. Probably not, because nobody will remember. Essentially, no. They 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 will know that like Samoa Joe took the win, but they, sure they won't really because I mean really this match was just designed to just be like again like like just a big not brawl really but just you know just, just a big hard man hitting, power yeah, slugging moves. it out yeah. Um, I did enjoy the match. I gave it three and a half Meltzers, mm-hmm. and we have ourselves a new TNT title. Samoa, Samoa Joe, Joe. Is king of all TV. Yeah. <laughs> the TNT champion and the Ring of Honor television champion. Yeah. And I, I like that it didn't really overstay its welcome. I think this went about as long as it should have. Yeah. No, it, it, you're right. I, I think this match was well. And that always uh, helps. 11 minutes, maybe, something like that. Wikipedia has it down to 9.55. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay. Right and on. I think that really helps a match like this a, a lot because you expect a lot of hard impact coming at you quickly. Yeah. And then when, you know, so it just should be, should when it ends like it does and it's not too super long, it's like, that's a good refresher. Right on, right on. Okay, moving on to our next match. We have the natural born thrillers, Darby Allen and Sting. That's not their name. It is, it? It is their name. Why is it? <laughs> because that was actually, that was already a tag team name. Once I a know, month. I know. <laughs> But that's why I can't. That's why I don't like a name like that because it's like now I'm just gonna think of the other thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I I don't know why they did that, but they did. It's not sticking for some reason. <laughs> Go ask me why. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we have Darby Allen and Sting versus Jay Lethal and the newly acquired Jay. E double F J A double R E double T double J Jeff Jarrett. I'm sorry, can you back up how many J's were there? Well that's uh no well, there's only two. Yeah. But it's double J. <laughs> yeah. I I say the same thing every time Jeff Jarrett pops out on my screen. <laughs> Why did you throw away that money? Why did you just give it to me? I mean, and look, okay, another compliment sandwich. (laughs) Just making up sandwiches over here. (laughs) First of all, he uh, he is a legend in the business. He's a wrestling uh, wrestling family legacy. Mm -hmm. Uh. He's a great wrestler. And you have no use for him. I have no use for him whatsoever, and I never have. As a child, when he came into the uh, NWA for that small, or the Crockett, for that tiny, tiny little run that was only like, I, God, I felt like it was only two weeks, and then you just never saw him again. <laughs> I remember thinking, I was like, I've heard of this guy. Isn't he from Memphis? What's he doing here? Y'all wasted money. And and, and I was like nine. <laughs> and I thought this was real back then. <laughs> and then he comes to WWF later on as Double J Jeff Jarrett. And I remember thinking, as like, you've wasted a lot of money on him. <laughs> And then he he went away for a while, and then he came back. And I thought, wow, you wasted money again. And then he went to WCW, and I was like, why do you people keep doing this? Well, that was, well, no, no, actually, you missed a few because he went from WWF to WCW, then back. Mm -hmm. And then, then yeah, then he came back. Well, then in between the second leaving and going to WCW again, they wasted more money because they let his contract lapse. And he, (laughs) yeah, and then he went to Impact. Uh huh. Actually, he started Impact. Yeah, that man ran ran Impact. (laughs) Oh, my God. 
God, it was just wow. D- to, to sum up, as I as I remember, <laughs> as I remember talking, they to never Dr. should have before, given them money. <laughs> well, there's that, but it's just the fact that it's like I, I I liken this to John Mulaney's. Is that Dean Cain bit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you're now, never you're never happy to see him. It's just like, is that him? <laughs> and, why? Okay, so uh, okay. Now I've said that. Let's put the compliment on the end of this. Mm-hmm. For a what is he, 53, 55, something like that? Something like that. I think you looked it up during the pay-per-view. He looked phenomenal. Yes, he did. I mean, he looks a hell of a lot better than Sting, which brings me to another point. Folks, I know we're fan of all fans of the Sting. We love the Stinger. We like the Crow Sting. We love the, the Surfer Sting. We love them all. We love all his... His different uh, uh, genres that he went through. Guys, I'm not a fan of old thing um, coming out in just just black jogging pants. Well, no, <laughs> uh, he was dressed like that on purpose because they had because Jarrett and Lethal had those people come out dressed as Sting, and and so he was disguised as one of them. Yeah, I know, but still. Excuse me, Grandpa Sting tried to die for your sins during that match. And My you God. <laughs> that's, let's see, that's exactly what we don't want to see. We don't want to see. He's eager to give it to you. I know. I think that's the Darby Allen influence. <laughs> I think Sting could be better used as a coach than... I think this whole tag team with that Darby was, Allen... That was the lie they told when they brought him in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> This thing has run its course. I don't think so. They have had more. That was, I think they're undefeated in pay-per-views. I think you're right. I think together as a team, they're not. They're un, yeah, they haven't beaten. Yeah, uh, guys. Okay, it, it's been a great run. Let's let's call it quits here because things looking worse and worse and worse. And, and it, it's not getting better. <laughs> he looked fine to me. One of the best points of this match was uh, was Darby Allen going to cough and drop on Jay Lethal and Satnam Singh just plucked him out of the air. <laughs> oh yeah, he goes to do the call and it was off hit- the side of the stage and he's just like, nope. <laughs> yeah, and he also goes to do the cough and drop and gets hit with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the ring he goes to do it and Jeff Jarrett wh- it just wax him good it was a great moment now the now yeah it that was a great moment but you know what the second time i watched it uh, i got upset about it what's wrong he laid there for two seconds and popped right back up he didn't even sell that guitar shot it's everybody sells the guitar shot it they didn't sell the hammer i mean <laughs> But you got to sell the well, guitar. Again, you have to understand, Darby Allen died when he got hit. And that's just post, <laughs> and post-mortem, no one told muscle, them. That's post-mortem muscle spasms. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so that that's one of the biggest problems that I had. It's like he, he no-sold the guitar. Every, You're right. He should have sold it harder. Yeah, uh, much harder. And... This was a fun match regardless. It was. It was. Uh, once again, Darby Allen and Sting um, go over. When, when are we going to get Jay Lethal a push? Jay Lethal is a hell of an athlete and a great, great, great talent. We love ROH, right? This was your ROH world champion well, I think if, if if this is done with, then they should absolutely point him towards Jericho. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't we? Yeah. Because th- this needs to happen. Um, this this was a fun match. I gave it a uh, three. Um, now, all right, Jamie Hader versus Tony Storm. Uh, surprisingly, a good match. Uh, I, I don't know why I say surprisingly because I like Jamie Hader, and I really like Tony Storm. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can help yourself. You, you, I think even in the best of best of descriptions, you you tend to uh, put a negative edge on it. And I think it's just the AEW women's roster. I just because I know how shitty it is. <laughs> 
But and the first time I saw Jamie Hayter, which was maybe a couple of years ago, and she was just there to do a job for mm-hmm. Baker and just disappeared after that. And I was like, wow, that, 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 that chick's got something. She's, she's got some talent. And I, I hate she's doing the job. I hope we see her again. And then we didn't. <laughs> but now she's back, and they had a pretty good match, even though the crowd was not into this. They did not give a damn about this match. They might have been too excited to get to the next two matches, I think. You know? I, I, yeah, they may have been just tired at this point. Yeah. Again, I, good Lord. We're on technically, it said, we're on, in, in the main card, we're on match 11 of 13, but in reality, we're on match 13 of 15. Yeah, I mean, again, Tony, you got to calm down. You don't have to fill the entire roster. And it's worth noting that I mean there there was there were minimal like segments of anything else happening. This this mm-hmm. card was not only packed, it was just wrestling wrestling wrestling. Yeah. There was hardly a breather. Agreed. Agreed. And uh yeah, I I don't have many notes for this because there's not there's not a lot to talk about. It was a standard wrestling match. It was it, it it was good. Pretty straightforward. Well, we should talk about <laughs> we should talk about Rebel getting ejected. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> um, she got caught trying to cheat. Right. Uh, she, and then she gets ejected. Baker comes in. Well, the yell of absolute. <laughs> go go ahead. I, I can't replicate it, but she just I would go look for it because I'm sure someone posted it online. She just. Screams like like a child died in front of her, yeah. <laughs> and then leaves. <laughs> and while that happens, Baker slides in, uh, pops uh, Tony. Yeah, and to- uh, Tony Storm takes the pinfall. Jamie Hader is your new AEW Women's Champion. Interim. That's something else. That might have been the worst word to be introduced into the into the wrestling lexicon. Yeah. What 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 is this? What what is this interim thing? What what is? Uh, he he's he's been very quick to to introduce this system. I don't like it. It's and yeah. It's a bit much. Because uh, look, just you you had the they forfeited the title. That's it. You you put it on whoever you want to, and um, when Thunder Rosa comes back, she's automatically number one contender. Yeah. Simple as that. So I, just, I don't like that. Just make it simple as that, though. That's yeah. It's it's yeah. it's not hard. It's just okay when you come back. Now we've got a feud. It's yeah. an automatic feud, and we can just boom go right back into it. You literally had a, a similar setup earlier in the match, early in the show with Nyla Rose and. And Jade Cargill, because technically, yeah. well, technically, Nyla Rose stole the belt. She did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we've also seen this before with the other interim situations where it ended up being title versus title. It's like, yeah. Don't stop. Yeah. It, it, we, we don't need this. And especially, we've done it. Yeah. What? How many times have we done this now? Well, I guess, I guess this is only the second time. At least two or three. Yeah. It, it feels like three, but it's really only two. It might be two. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, but a really nice moment at the end of the match. Britt gives her gives Jamie Hayter the title title and uh, and hugs her. Yeah, and uh, yeah, congratulations to Jamie Hayter. Uh, dark horse in the run in there, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to see the title on her. I so uh, carry that thing well. All right, I gave this match uh, two and a half. Okay, and. Now let's get to our semi-main event, and that would be the acclaimed versus Swerve in Our Glory. On a side note, I hate that name. Well, you won't have to worry about it anymore. I hate it as much as Hensley hates Death Triangle. But you know... (laughs) I like Death Triangle much more than Swerve in Our Glory. You know what made me laugh was the fact that (laughs) as this match got underway, you were talking about how you were getting kind of tired of seeing this match. And yeah. I, I knew, I, unfortunately, Twitter made sure to spoil me as hard as possible. Uh-huh. So I was like, I just had to sit there quietly going, well, don't have to worry much longer. That's, <laughs> that is very true. Um, 
So this match gets started. Uh, strong start uh, with Keith Lee selling like he's a luchador, even though he's 350 pounds. Uh, this is a thing for me. Uh, it's just physics, man. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta, you gotta. I, I can't get down with somebody that big now, selling did, like that. He didn't give it up that easy, and he did the things that I know you appreciate as a big man because he never left sure. his feet. Sure. Every time he got knocked out or knocked over the ropes, he was on his feet at ringside. I saw that. True. He never went off his, head, you're, never his legs. You're right. You're right. I do have a problem with him selling a Hurricane Rana from a you know a 180-pound man. I, I do. I. That's fair. Uh I can make arguments about momentum, but I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll fall on open ears. <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> uh, once again, who's the heel? Well, as it became very apparent toward the end of the match, there was really only one person mm-hmm. that was the heel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, because Swerve has uh, ha- in the lead up to this match and in the middle of it went full like Batman villain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And was was just absolutely going nuts to the point where he grabbed part of the guardrail, set it up on the side of the ring. Right. Um, And then it sat there for 30 minutes. It did. (laughs) And it sat there for a purpose to do two things. One, establish that Keith Lee is still a face because when Swerve almost got knocked off onto it, he caught him. Yeah. But then then, uh, Keith Lee got knocked onto it and crumpled that thing like an aluminum can. But he also yeah. grabbed some more tools. There were a set of pliers near ringside for some <laughs> reason, and Swerve grabbed them. He'd finally had enough, and he was going to, I don't know, rip, either rip out a fingernail or a finger off of, I think it was Anthony Bowen. Now, we've seen this earlier, haven't we? Yes. The, people pointed that out, too, that this was... That this, this was the same situation as Death Triangle, but reversed because he was like he gave the, he gave him the Keith Lee get the pliers to Keith Lee to be like here let's do this, and Keith Lee was like no flung them away yeah and then picked up Anthony Bowens and was like all right this is your deal now and he got out of the ring and just watched the end of the match yeah yeah he's that's see this is the other thing this is why I don't know the face doesn't leave the match after like no, swerve I, slapped him no i he did and then keith lee gets out of the ring here's the thing he could still stay a heel but he's definitely sympathetic because what he was basically doing was like i don't want to partake in a i don't know in a victory in this way he doesn't want to win this way he's not going to stand for it mm-hmm. and it's his way of basically saying You've gone out of line. I'm, I'm not letting this, and I'm not being a party to it. Right. So he was letting he was letting Swerve have his just desserts. Right. It's still. It is. It's it's still overcomplicating a face versus heel, don't you? A think? little, a little bit. I mean, maybe. I mean, but again, I would I would argue that he also wouldn't do something like like deck Swerve because. Because they were, I mean, up until that point where the line was absolutely crossed, mm-hmm. he was still trying to work with them because they're friends. He thought, right. he thought they were still friends. Okay. But I, I, I understand because, because I mean, until pushed, um, Keith Lee projects that gentle giant kind of. I'm only going to use force when I have to, and you know, in a situation. Yeah. See, I, I don't know. see. It's not selling hard for me, but see, yeah. then again. I, I, I'm I've, I'm not a huge fan of Keith Lee being in AEW anyway. Okay, I like him. I I haven't seen him enough on the main roster to mm-hmm. say I want him back in WWE. Uh, but I would love to see him back in NXT. Okay, back where he was shining. Uh, that's that's where I really want to see him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not he's not doing a lot for me here. Uh, well, he's about to feud with Swerve, so we'll see how that's. Well, that's go. true. <laughs> so yeah, it's we'll 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 see what happens. Yeah. We'll we'll give him a minute. Because uh, uh, Anthony Bowens and Caster took advantage of that, and they retained. And they did. I gave this match uh, two and a half Meltzers. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I had a problem with the face heel sure, thing. Sure. 
and uh, didn't want to go much uh, higher than that. I like the story they told. It was okay. It was it got convoluted, and it was the same damn story that mm-hmm. we saw earlier, and that's that's something I got a problem with because once again. This would not have happened on McMahon's watch. <laughs> I mean, the the Death Triangle Elite one was less complicated for me because I don't like the Elite. So. Right. <laughs> so but I, I mean, the 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 I know foreign yes. object and no, I don't want to do it. Yeah, you got to do it. This, yeah, I don't want to do it. This and, might be the worst example of it is because we've seen on previous shows and we've commented on it where sometimes certain moves or certain like little spots will get mm-hmm. recreate will get reused throughout matches yeah but this is the first time a major play like a major plot point or a story point has been blatantly reused that i can remember yeah yeah Yeah. and it's going to be used again in the main event because this is where they subvert it but yeah but i mean it but it was the same thing kind of i mean it's just uh, yeah different stories are right are right around it but it's the same it's the same principle which brings us here to the main event, and that is Maxwell Jacob Freeman versus John Moxley. With William Regal. I feel like I should point that out. With for William some, Regal. For some True. reason. Yeah, yeah. Now. I am torn on this. I, the fan in me wants to give this a five Mm -hmm. because what should have happened three years ago happened Mm -hmm. tonight. And that is Maxwell Jacob Freeman becoming your AEW world champion. Mm -hmm. And I could not be happier about this. However... Um, the second time I watched this, I can't help but feel like this was not anywhere close to Max's best match. Not, not by a, not, not by a sight. See, I really thought you were going to say you watched it again and you realized that he's not the people's champion because he clearly tapped long before he got that finish. I never saw that. I I, I do remember him applauding uh, a good move uh, that that John Moxley applied in, in the STF vigorously with one hand. Yeah, on well, the ring canvas. Well, that's because the other hand was behind him, and he was like, "This is this is great, man. This is mm-hmm. good for you, kid. You're coming along." Mm. <laughs> I, no, this match was choppy. And it didn't, it did not look as good as it, as what I'm used to seeing from MJF. Mm -hmm. And a thought crossed my mind. I don't know if this is accurate, but I'm going to just throw it out there anyway. You think Mox was mad about dropping the title? Oh no, that man wants to go on vacation so bad. You think so? Yeah. (laughs) The reason he could, he wasn't out the door previously was because of the punk situation. I think he was fine with it. Because, or maybe it was just confusing because once again, we didn't know who's the face and who's the heel. They were cheering for MJF. Well, that's because the crowd forced it. Forced it. I mean, nothing yeah. Mox, again, it was like Chicago all over again. Nothing Mox was going to do was going to get the crowd on his side. So mm-hmm. he just said, fuck it, and started working heel. <laughs> And maybe that was just confusing to these two guys, and they don't know how to maybe. switch on a because, dime. Because MJF was, mo- was kind of babyface in peril for the whole match. As a matter of fact, um, Hensley brought up something uh, during, while we were watching it. MJF actually broke out the dusty punches. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Please. Any professional wrestler listening to this show, I implore you, stop with the stupid little goddamn fucking rabbit punches. Yeah. Those are the worst. They're, they're jabs. Look- but that's- yeah, <laughs> stop with the stupid. No, they're not jabs. Yeah, A they were, jab they were- looks like it connects. Like it actually does some sort of damage to the person that you are jabbing with your fist in a world of make believe that we are suspected to suspend our disbelief and enjoy. You're just, what the fuck are those little jabs? Let's, okay, let's call them jabs. What the fuck are you accomplishing? <laughs> it is the worst fucking stupidest looking move I have seen any wrestler pull out and it's not just MJF no, I have no. never never successfully seen a wrestler try to throw a punch like that without actually hitting their opponent yeah for real and it looked good and you know now when you said that to me that night be honest because I, I had a feeling I knew where we, where we were headed took a little bit of offense to that but after I watched it the second time, I'm like, wow, that, that, that's, that looks pretty shitty. See, here's the thing about that. And <laughs> no, I, I'm not defending it. Okay. I don't I think was, you can. No, I can't. I <laughs> it can't looks bad. Because it bugs me too. And, and, and Dave is right. And what it is, is either the, the other guy is not ready or is not entirely on board with, you know, the punches and isn't rocking with them the right way because it is a com- it is a combination of both of those men not doing it right. Yeah, you're, you're, I'm, not, I'm not shifting any You're not blame. wrong. You're I'm not, not wrong. Blame, but because it, it mostly looks terrible. I always hate this too. I hate weak looking punches. Mm-hmm. I can tell when a guy is working too soft uh-huh. against someone who's not taking it and and selling it right. So they both look stupid. I, I thought you were going to go somewhere else with that, but no, you no, you're you're absolutely no, right. It bothers me too. And I, I mean, I know, I know it's not great, but I'd rather them stiff each other a little. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I agree, I agree. And look, I, hey, I, I've I've tagged people in the ring before, yeah. and just because, one, just like Kenzie said, I, I, uh, my jabs look weak. Yeah, they when I was in the ring, they looked weak, so I made sure to make contact. The I think the main problem with the jabs are if you're gonna is doing multiple because if you're gonna just gonna do a jab like that, you gotta have them have it where either the guy's gonna like you gotta back, you like, gotta pop fall, that head back, yeah, pop the head back, or fall back against the ropes, or just go down on the first one, get back up, take another one. Sure, yeah, I'll give you, yeah, because, yeah, because that, the, that's the fine. multiple jabs. It looks pretty. Like it looked pretty when Muhammad Ali did it, but he was really punching a guy. <laughs> yeah, and these kind of punches work situationally on stage, on camera, mm-hmm. when you can manipulate how the audience is seeing 100%. it. hundred percent. You right. and I know full well how stage combat works, mm-hmm. how stunts on film work, but in this sort of thing where you are in the center of of a massive crowd of people trying to sell that punch, you're not going to do it unless you're actually full out hitting your opponent. And you know that I, I think you can also tell that first of all, MJF not used to work in face. Right. Uh, I think he just pulled that out of his ass maybe, and just, uh, the, I'm just, I'm going with the dusty jabs. He probably and, glanced over at the guy wearing the dusty polka dot jacket and was like, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. When Dusty threw those jabs, yeah, and I didn't think about this until just now. He was always in the corner, mm-hmm. and he was hidden from that hard cam yeah. for the most part. Yeah. So when he threw that jab, he only threw three of them, and then it was followed by the bionic elbow. Yeah. See, that's the thing I was gonna say when you guys were talking about it being on film and everything is like you can't control the coverage. Mm-hmm. You like you know where the hard camera is, but you have no control over. Every, where every camera is and what they're filming and how it's going to look when they yeah. cut to it. And that's just that's just something that you you there's no else other way to say it. You just got to learn that the hard that, way. Yeah, and that's I mean that's something that unfortunately sometimes it's out of their control that kills momentum when I'm watching a match or when we're watching a match and we just see something that looks weak. I also I I feel like Max went back and watched the game tape of that and I'll bet he's cringing too oh sure 
I, I I'm I'm sure he is. As as good as he performs in the ring, especially because at that point in the match, they're both fatigued. Whether it, whether they're whether they're selling it or they're just straight up tired, they're both. Yeah. And it's like so trying to do a, a move like that, which requires the other person to also have the energy to, like, pop back and react, is a bad time to do it. Yeah. Now MJF, the the go home on this yeah. is this is where I I start really running into a problem. Well, see, again, it's it, it's fine, and it honestly would have been a nice it's a nice subversion of the other two things. But they also, you know, it's like they're also fresh in the mind as as some of the mo- most important developments of the show. Right. Uh, first of all, MJF he does go heel here. Yeah, he goes to put on the ring. He uh, well before that oh, happens. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. He uh, he he gets uh, he he slings a. Uh, uh, Moxley into the ropes. Mm-hmm. Moxley's coming back. It looks like he's about to throw a lariat, and he pulls the ref into the ring, yep. uh, into his yep. uh, line bump, of fire. Yeah. Yep. Huge ref bump. And he goes to grab that ring, and down comes William Regal. Says, says don't you do it, yep. sunshine. Clear, no, clear no, as no, day. No, no, he, he bellows right by a camera. Put it Put it down. Throw it down right now. Yeah. And Max scowls at him and does it. Yeah. And throws it, getting rid of the only title mm-hmm. that he has technically won mm-hmm. in AEW, uh, the ring, and throws it and gives him the double finger. Crowd just pops for it because you're not going to get him this he can do no wrong in the eyes of this crowd and they, not not at this point they fucking love him yeah <laughs> and then he turns around and he gets caught mm-hmm. well uh here comes another ref down to the ring and we have yet a no, a double ref bump mm-hmm. boom at this point Here's where things get interesting, yeah. Regal, throw, after he just got through yelling at him, don't you do it. No, he, here's what he does. He specifically directs Moxley. He's, he's like, you need to he, – well, because he, he traps MJF, and he, MJF uh, applauds. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but but, uh, but Regal, Regal gets his attention. He's like, you need to get the ref. Yeah. The ref is – go get the ref up. Yeah. And when he does that, what happens? That's when he gets caught. Is that when he gets? Uh, that's what. That's when he got caught, and that's when, that's when the the Nux came in. That's when the Nux came in because as Moxley is doing that, Regal just takes out a pair of brass Nux and slides them to MJF. Yes, but he got caught into a into a chokehold. Mm-hmm. He goes down, and then he turns it, and then I think he goes into an STF. The, this, this is where he started applauding the, the, the yes, fine move uh-huh. that he did. Yeah. As the ref is waking up, yep. he lets uh, – Mox lets go of the hold. Mm-hmm. MJF grabs the Nux. Wham! Nails him. Nux back into trunks. Three count. One, two – Three and That's we it. have ourselves a new AEW World Heavyweight Champion, yep. Maxwell Jacob Freeman. Long time coming. This is the problem. Um, again, with the international object, the foreign the foreign object coming into the ring. No, I don't want to use it. Now, granted, the story was different. But we saw it three times this this evening. I think if anything comes out of this, it should be Tony Khan issuing some sort of ultimatum about <laughs> about, uh, <laughs> about hardware around the ring. Yeah, basically, because it's mean, like it was a factor in three major matches. Three mate, yeah, all I believe they were all title matches they too, were, weren't they? Yes, they were. Yeah, and see, I would if Tony Khan you wants need a Jack to, Tunney to come out and ban for. <laughs> Band. See, I was going to say Bill Watts oh, that. and say, all right. Well, yeah, yeah, but then people aren't allowed to go over the top rope anymore. You're not allowed to go over the top rope. Well, that that cuts out half the roster right there. <laughs> and then you take the padding up from around the floor. <laughs> and 
Ah, oh, yeah, at see. The, at the end of the day, MJF is world champion. I hope Mox gets another bonus for once again dropping a title <laughs> on pay-per-view. And I hope he gets to go on vacation now. Well, you know, it's time. it was time for Mox. It I was mean, time last time. He wanted to go. <laughs> I mean, it's look, he's he's been a fine champion. Um, they needed that star power in the you know in the beginning with the Dean Ambrose coming over, and you well, know. not not even that. He's just been the most stable workhorse guy they've had, who is of legit, sadly who yeah is also a legit star. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, so he's had to stay there and plug holes as things fell apart a little bit. Yeah, and so now hopefully I hope he gets to have a little rest and then come back. Right. So and you know what? Let's. Uh, I really want to see MJF hold this title for a I want him I want his predictions to come true. You want him to hold it for a year? For I want him to hold this belt for a year mm. and then I want the buy I, I want the great American buyout to start WWE oh, versus AEW <laughs> because let's be honest there is no way that MJF is going to be the greatest superstar in the world. He'll never become a legend unless he goes to WWE. People that hate WWE, you can disagree with me if you want, but I am right about this. It's not a bias thing. He's not going to be the greatest in AEW. A year ago, I'd have said you're full of shit. Yeah. But with Vince gone and Triple H in charge, I feel like that might actually be a possibility. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, even even a year ago, he would have still, even if Vince was still there, regardless of how shitty WWE would have gotten, he would have still had to go there to get, because you got to get that world title because. Yeah, it, but he wouldn't have been MJF. Probably not. We all know that. He'd have, they'd have left the MJF persona at AEW and gone over to WWE. And he would be, have been Rich Man Freeman or... No, I was going to say he'd be <laughs> Jimmy Fucknuts. Yeah. Uh, you know, he comes out there uh, in boxing trunks and a clown mask. <laughs> and he uh, fucks the ring post while getting... <laughs> Acorns chucked at his dick hole, hey. and that's his whole gimmick. You're and not then the only one who can channel WWE creative anymore. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, look. To be fair, I I remember Ric Flair getting put into the thrown into the back of a an El Camino and driven into the desert by Ray freaking Mysterio. <laughs> And just left there. And Flair, in my mind, is is still the greatest ever. Uh, what I'm saying is, yeah, we've, well, we've all it's well, a, that's you got to do some bad shit well, in that's wrestling. That's, it's, well, again, you're you have to qualify that. It was WCW. Everyone was getting hit with that stick. Well, that's that's true. When they that's had true. an idea for you, it was like uh, it was a fifty fifty. It was was it going to end up good or bad? And it was usually bad. Austin was the freaking ringmaster. <laughs> that was WWF. Yes, yes, it was. Yep. And came out with Ted DiBiase. I mean, at least they gave him DiBiase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because he was the million dollar champion. Yeah. And <laughs> but yeah, I, I still but yeah, he's gonna have to go there because you gotta Ouch. get that world title. You gotta get that Hall of Fame ring. You I mean, he's he, he's gonna have to get that IC belt. Maybe not the US title. I hate to say it, but that US title don't mean shit to anybody anymore. And arguably <laughs> the IC title may not either, but uh, I, I I would hope in that scenario, if he got it, he would revert it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Wouldn't it be nice? I got to say. Um, so this overall pay-per-view, uh, choppy, not the best AEW pay-per-view I've no, seen. No, but solid. Uh, no, a solid one. Very solid. But uh, well, as I, I, we, we've hit the point where people should start accepting that they can't all be bangers. <laughs> no, they, they can't. They can't. And there are cracks forming in AEW that they can easily be fixed. Yeah. It just small little 
small little fixes. Mm-hmm. Um, Barnes, if I had to ask you, best dressed. Oh, um, it, it's always a surprise to me. I, never I know. <laughs> uh, I thought uh, you didn't see it, but uh, I thought Dan Housen did uh, with, with re, sort of reverting slash coming out in his in his new guys looked really good. Okay, okay, okay. What what about worst dress? I'm gonna. I'll take your word for the best. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, in, in fairness, I'll give a nod to you and Sting, but that was purposeful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, that was tough. That was tough, man. All right. So, yeah, overall. Although I wasn't a fan of Jade Carter. I'm not really a big fan of her cosplay in general. So No, it's weird, right? And I got to see that one live sourced on Twitter when she was, throw- when she was asking for suggestions. Mm-hmm. And it was like she, so it was like, yeah. It came just, out as Chitara. She had no it's, idea who Chitara was no, when I was throwing out to her. No. So overall, I gave this pay-per-view a uh, three and a half. Uh, not bad. Not good. It, 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 it was solid. Actually, I got to walk it back a little bit. You know who, who was up there for best dressed? Marina Shafir, because she was driving the lowrider, and she, she was dressed, she was fully decked out like a cholo. Yeah, she actually kind of looked like Ray when he was with the Filthy Animals. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> especially with the face, too, because Ray looks like a girl when he takes that mask off. No, uh, definitely a young a young man who I would card. Yeah. <laughs> Dungs, if, uh, if people want to reach out to you online or follow you online uh, and it's not Twitter, where can they do that at? Well, you can follow me at uh, Two Dogs. This is a or this is a work username uh, on TikTok because it seems like that's where I'm getting the most traction lately. And uh, Chris, if people want to reach out to you online someplace that's not Twitter, where can they do that at? Then they won't because I'm not going to engage <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I say that because, you know, these days, who knows how much longer Twitter's going to be I around. Think it'll, I think it'll be around, but do you really want to be there for much longer? Yeah, get out of that burning building. If you want to follow me personally online, you can do that on Instagram, at DB Hensley. Also on Instagram, you can follow at Long Walk Podcast or at This Is A Takeover. Hey. If, uh, if you want to keep up with Long Walk Productions, you can visit us online at longwalk.us or search for Long Walk Productions and Long Walk Podcasts on Facebook. To see more of our original work or hear past episodes that are no longer streaming, you can follow the YouTube links in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoy this show or any of the shows on the Long Walk Podcast Network, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. And let's not forget that next week we have Survivor Series and Wall real? Games. Is it real? Oh my God. Yeah, man. You're telling me there are two pay per views next week? That's right. God yeah, damn we, it. We have had a well, nice one of them's hiatus. NXT. We won't watch one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've had a nice You won't watch one of them, but I'll produce a show about both of them. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) Happy Thanksgiving, asshole. (laughs) The blessing. (laughs) Oh, man. I have really enjoyed doing this podcast. I can't wait to do Survivor Series. I'm very excited about it. And until then, until next week, I guess, uh, this is... David Hayes for Chris the Fashion Plate Barnes and David Hensley saying, guys, have a great Thanksgiving.